Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about strings in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will begin with the basic introduction to strings in Python and then I will discuss declaration of Python strings and indexing. Moving further, I will explain how we access the strings in Python and after this I will explain string methods and operations. And finally, to sum up this session, I will explain string interpolation and formatting. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. So without any further ado, let us understand what are strings in Python. So what are strings in Python? A string is an immutable data type in Python which cannot be changed once we declare it in a program. So if we use the single or double quotes to declare strings in Python and strings are arrays of bytes representing Unicode characters and however Python does not have a character data type a single character is simply a string with a length of one. Now that we know what strings are let us take a look at how we declare strings in Python. Now declaring and indexing is one thing so declaration we'll first talk about. We can simply use the single or double quotes to declare a string. And to assign a string to a variable, we can simply use the equal to operator with a string value. And to declare the multi-line strings, we use the three quotes. And okay, I'll just tell you how we can declare strings with an example. For this example, so I have a notebook open here. I'll just name it as Python strings. Now, first of all, I want to show you how you can declare the strings in Python because I've already told you what are strings. So let's just say I have one variable which is going to be name. And using the double quotes, I can declare my string as Edureka. All right. Okay, let's just say using the single quotes also, I can declare my string. And after that, uh, let me just tell you the multi line string that I was uh, talking about. Okay, let's just write description. So, what I can do now is let's say Python is a versatile programming language. And we can learn Python easily. So I'll tell you what is the difference between all these three. There is no difference at all. If I call name, I'll get the output as Edureka. If I call, let's say, course, I'll get the output as Python certification. And if I call the description now, all right, I'll cut this cell. I'll get the output as something like this, right? This is a multi line string, guys. Now, I'll tell you one thing, guys. This three quotes that we are using, if I write it as, let's say, I'll write description again. So, if I use double quotes, all right, Python is a programming language, Python, or I'll just, you know, Python is very easy to learn i'll not be able to do that because for multi-line strings i have to use the triple quotes all right so now we'll talk about the indexing guys why indexing is important and why actually we use it for strings so for indexing before we understand how we can access the values in a string we have to understand indexing so to access the value in a string we can use the indexes and indexes are locations for specific characters in a string for example, if you have a string, let's say for name Edureka, the index at the character E will be zero and at the end of the string will be six. And now they can be negative indexing as well. So the point of telling you about all this is because it plays an important role while accessing the strings for substrings and slicing operations. Now I'll tell you how we can access the string in Python. So using the indexing, we can access the strings. Okay, I'll just tell you an example. So for let's say name, I can use the index number four. It'll give me the right. I'm getting the value at the index number four. So this is how you access the string, or simply you can just write name. It will print the whole string, guys. So this is how you can access the string in Python. It's quite easy. It's like calling another variable. And if you want just a one character, let's say you want the index number five, will get you those characters. Now to get a range of characters, let's say you have one whole sentence in which you have specified a string with 20 or more words. 
if you only want to access let's say two to three words so how are you going to do that that is where the substrings come into place or we call it as a string slicing as well so in python substring it is actually a sequence of characters within another string and also referred as slicing as i told you about so we'll take a look at a few string or slicing operations so first of all i want one string for me all right so what exactly are we going for so let's just say python is a interpreted programming language so this is my string guys now i'm going to perform a few slicing operations on this so first of all let me just tell you how you slice using the indices so this is how you do it so first of all you have to provide the starting point so I'll just write zero and after the colon you have to mention the end part so let's just say python is a six letter word so index is going to start from zero and at the letter n the index will be five so I'll write it as five so since i have written the index number which is at the letter n also it's not giving us the alphabet n over here in the output because when you write the end index it does not include the character at that particular index it only includes minus one so if you are writing five over here in the output there'll be only until fourth index so i hope you understand this guys similarly i can write it as um, using only the start index without any end index so if i write it as let's say five and if i don't give the end index let's see what happens i'm getting the whole uh, string guys and similarly if i don't provide a starting index and only write the end index i'll be getting the value starting from zero itself and until the end point that i have provided over there now i can also slice the complete string for that i don't have to do anything just write this colon and it is going to give me the whole string sliced and after that i can use the start index and index and also give a step as well so if you are familiar with the range functions in python you will be familiar with the step as well so what happens is i have three values first one will be my starting index so i'll just write it as zero and index will just write it as let's say 15 and uh, steps i'm going to give two so let's see the output first so we're getting pto sait so what exactly is this guys so starting from zero we are getting p alphabet for sure then after that the step is two so zero one and two it is giving t after that we have o so after each two alphabets we are getting the output inside our uh, slice string over here after o we have s and after that we have a because these blank spaces are also considered as a string here I'll tell you what exactly I mean when I say blank characters are also strings. So at n the index number is five. So if I write it as let's say index number six, there's nothing. It's a blank space, guys. So this is why I'm telling you a blank space is also considered as a character in strings, guys. All right. So this is how we can use the indexes for substring or slicing a string. There's one more thing I want to tell you guys. There's one cool thing that you can do. So anyone ask you how you can reverse a string using the substring or you know this uh, slicing methods so you can just do one thing add the minus one over here so this is your reverse string guys using the negative step so this is one thing that you can learn for slicing the strings after that i want to talk about the negative indexes as well guys so for that we are going to take a smaller string so we'll take name again guys which is eddie Raker. so let's say i want to get the values from index number at the letter u until the end of the string that is a using the negative indexes only so what i'll do is since the negative index starts from the end of the string so at the letter a the index will be minus one at k it will be minus two similarly at letter u it will be minus one two three four and five so i'll write as minus five and minus one so i'm getting as u r e k but there is one thing that we cannot do which is back propagate like we have done over here getting the reverse string but in this case if i write it as let's say minus one and minus five it will show me an error or it will show me an empty string because it cannot back propagate using the negative indexes or any other indexes let's say if i want to start at index number five and i want to come back to zero there's no output at all because we cannot back propagate in uh, strings guys 
all right so now that we are done with the slicing as well we're going to move on to the next uh, topic in our session which is string methods guys so we'll start with a few methods first of all so i'm going to use the name uh, string again and first of all i want to use the capitalize method let's see what it does what basically it does is uh, it capitalizes the first letter of the string for this i want to take one more variable let's just say edureka right we'll call it as b and uh, now i want to capitalize so this is how it uh, changes the first letter to capital letter now after this let's just say how the count method works so in this i have to specify one argument which is going to be any character that i want to test how many times it's occurring so i'll test for uh, e so count method basically gives you the count of the specified value inside the string and after this we have one more method which is let's say find and let's just say i want to find u it's going to give me the index number of the specified value similarly we can use the index method for finding out the index number at the letter u which is going to give the same value as find method and after that there are a few methods which uh, we can use like is alnorm which is going to tell me if the output is true all the characters inside the string are alphanumeric and if i write as alpha it is all the characters are alphabetic let's just say name is equal to edureka2020 now when i check is alpha it's going to give me the value as false because all the characters are not alphabet i'll remove this this also i'll remove and similarly for is alpha like that we have is decimal we can check if all the values in the string are decimal or not we can check for if all the values are lower letter keywords or lower case letters we can check for upper letters as well now we have one more method using which we can actually convert the whole all right wait a second guys i'll change it to all caps now i can use the lower method to change all the values into lower case letters and after that we have one replace method as well so using replace i have to specify two arguments the first one will be what i want to replace so i want to replace uh, let's say instead of r i want to put a dollar sign let's see how it works so this is how you can do it guys the use the replace method for strings and then we have strip method guys it basically returns you the stripped version or the clean version of the string guys and uh, after that we have split as well so split is rather interesting guys uh, for this i want to use the longest string that we had and you have to specify some part where you want to actually split your string so i had uh, the full string was python is an interpreted programming language so after is i have actually split the string inside in a list with two values as you can see guys so these are a few methods that we have in python strings and now that we are done with the string methods let us take a look at a few string operations in python so there are a few operations that we can do using these methods that i've already showed you so these are also string operations there are also a few operations like reversing a string that i've already showed you using the slicing and then you can do the concatenation of two strings so let's just say you have a is equal to python and then b is equal to let's say edureka now if i want to join two strings i can do this right i can do this as well i can uh, add twice so these are a few operations that we can actually perform using strings and string methods but more importantly i want to talk about string interpolation which is string interpolation in python can be simply defined as the process of evaluating a string that is contained in a container memory as one or more placeholders in simple terms string interpolation is a method which makes it easier for developers to execute string formatting and concatenation in python so let's just take a few examples to understand this so first of all i want to talk about percentage formatting so for that uh, let me just take a few variables first of all i'm going to take we already have a and b right so i'll just do one thing i'll take c and uh, using the percentile okay so like just say python and edureka we have a and b all right as you can 
learn python easily at all right so now when i print this i am getting the value or the output as you can learn python easily at at your acre so what happened is i'm using this formatting technique with percentile formatting and i've provided my variables over here so this is a very simple example of string interpolation where i'm able to use the formatting technique and this is quite easy guys a little complicated for the readability of the program but still it's the oldest method for this and after this we have one more technique which is f string support and f string is nothing but uh, we'll just uh, explain it with an example so similarly let's just say for c we have before that we write f and after this what i can do is i mean you, you can learn now after this inside the placeholders i'll just provide a you can learn python easily at b so this is as simple as it looks guys now when i print c i'm getting the same output which is you can learn python easily at Eureka. so this is one another way to for string interpolation and after this we have string dot format guys which is nothing but a method that we have for strings so now what i can do is all right i'll just show you how to deal with it format or i can just write it as you can learn now we'll use the placeholders only and inside this uh, i'll write a easily at b using the format now i'll write it as a is equal to a and b is equal to b when i print c now you can learn python easily at Eureka. so this is one way to do it again and last but not the least for string interpolation we have the template strings guys so let me just tell you about that the templates basically works the same way as these do so what we can do is write template and inside this we write it as you can learn a easily at b c dot all right i forgot to import this uh, dependency so from string we have to import template all right so after this a is equal to a b is equal to b so as you can see guys you can learn python easily at Eureka. so using the template i'm able to put a and b using this uh, dollar symbol and for substitute i'm providing a and b over here now that we are done with the session don't forget to subscribe to Eureka for more exciting tutorials and uh, press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Eureka. And don't forget to hit the like button, share, and also check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. If you have any doubts and questions, you can mention them in the comment section below. Until then, happy learning. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!